Hello friends, in the last video uh, we did see how do we convert a word document into a vector, right? So this is something we have seen in detail in the last video. As a follow up to it, now we have a document which is being converted into a vector through a series of steps. Now the next thing is how do you cluster them together? How do you know that this particular document belongs to this particular type of group? Uh, that is where the previous video concluded. So in this session, what we are going to see is how do you cluster your data? So you have a vector, how do you cluster it? And when a new document comes into the domain, how does the machine learning algorithm understand and classifies it into a particular group? So we are going to see a very simple model called KNN algorithm. Uh, what I have done is I have taken a random set of nine data points. Okay, so these are the nine data points which I have taken. Now I'm going to do a classification of it. In fact, um, this is something which we would have come across in our earlier stages, uh, probably in the higher secondary mathematics. So I'm not going to cover any Python aspect of it, but I'm just going to cover the mathematical part, the Python implementation of the same algorithm, which is straightforward and simple, will be covered in a different video. Okay. So what I have done in the first step is I have noted down all the data points. This is a two dimensional one. So a X coordinate and a Y coordinate, nothing else. So I have a nine data points. I don't know how to group them. I have class, I have just listed it them here. Now, K and N in this, the K signifies the number of clusters which we need to form. There are various ways we can do it. If we're from a very simple way, wherein you just take the square root of the number of elements you have. So I have nine elements. So square root of nine is three. I can form three clusters. That's a base. There are very complicated methods like elbow method, Shiloid method. Uh, I'm not going to go in depth of it. We will cover them during the Python implementation because it is more a uh, sophisticated method to determine the number of clusters which you need to form. But to understand KNN, you just need to know the concept. So I have taken all the nine data points. I have formed three clusters. How did I arrive at the number three? because I have nine elements, so square root of n is three. Okay, so if you have 10 elements, square root of 10. So don't go by the fraction part, just stick on to the integer part. Okay, now cluster one, cluster two, cluster three. Now for each cluster, I need a centroid. Do I, do I know one? No, so I just start with a trial. Okay, three clusters, nine elements, so I take arbitrarily the very first element as the centroid for the first cluster, the fourth one as the centroid for the cluster two, and the seventh one as the um, centroid for the cluster three. Can you take anything else? Absolutely fine. You have to start somewhere, right? Now, what does this number signifies? So there is a formula called as Euclidean distance, which can calculate the distance between any two vectors. So now this is a centroid and now you have a point A. So what is the distance between this two point, this point A and the centroid? I calculate using this Euclidean distance. And since the point A and the centroid are the same, it will result as zero. Then I will do the same thing between the point A and the centroid of cluster two, point A and the centroid of cluster three. So I do get these values. Now, which cluster can I put in the point A? The idea is simple. <clears throat> Show me your friend, I will tell you your character. So what does it mean is you are more closely aligned with a friend. That's what it means. The same algorithm or the same concept applies here. Out of these three points, zero is the more mi the minimum number. 
and it belongs to cluster 1. So A will be arranged in cluster 1. Repeat the same exercise and assign clusters depending on the minimal distance. For example, take the point E. You have 2, 8.1 and 3.2. 2 is the minimal distance. So E is more closer to cluster 1. So I have put in cluster 1. So at the end of this trial, I would have arranged all the points in some clusters. <coughs> is that over? We don't know. Now, with this result, this is how the clusters will look like. Cluster 1 has element A, E, H, I because they are centroids. These elements are more closer to the centroid of cluster 1. How did we arrive at it? Using this tabular car. So A, here you have E, you have H and you have I. Same way cluster 2 and 3. Now I am going to repeat this experiment as a trial 2. But here there is the same number of clusters 1, 2, 3. But centroid I am going to take the average of the elements which are present in cluster 1. So for x coordinate you have 5. So you have 5, you have 3, you have 5 again, you have 1. So what will be the average of this? The average of it is 3.5. I have noted it down. I will do the same thing for the y coordinate. I will repeat it for cluster 2 and 3. Now you have got the mean of all the elements in cluster 1 which was identified during trial 1 and repeat the whole experiment. Now what is <coughs> surprising is even after you repeat the whole experiment and you compare these clusters the elements remain the same. Nothing has moved that means they have reached a state of equilibrium and this is where each of the element belongs. Now assume that during this trial too, if the elements have interchanged a cluster, you need to keep repeating it until a state wherein the outcome of the two trials, the two last trials are identical. That means that <clears throat> the elements have reached a state of equilibrium and have been properly categorized. So you started with a random set of elements. You classify, you put in three clusters wherein you got the three based on the thumb rule of square root of the number of elements. There are sophisticated ways of calculating k. One special way is elbow method which we will cover in the Python session. And once you have identified a cluster 1, 2, 3, arbitrarily I am taking one of the element and making them a centroid. I am calculating the distance between each of the elements to the centroid using this formula which is called as Euclidean distance formula and wherever the distance is lesser I am classifying that element to the cluster. This goes by the principle of more closer you are that is where you belong to. right? And I will repeat the whole experiment until the outcome of two trials are identical. And how do I do it in the trial 2? The centroid changes based on the mean of the elements identified in a particular cluster from the previous trial. So in this case it became so simple. Now if I have if I have to introduce an element h with the random coordinates it will go ahead and see which centroid it is very closer to and then it will sit in that cluster. That is how you have a vector and then you form a cluster. So this is a very very simple way of KNN. Now if you are worrying that so much of calculation you need to do, do not worry. In Python you need not write dreams of code. It is all written in the libraries. You have to just invoke them. But the intent is you need to understand how this KNN works. Is KNN the full-fledged algorithm? It doesn't have any disadvantages. It does. It is a slow process. Now you had just 9 elements. Assume you have 10,000 elements or 1 lakh elements. The way it is going to categorize, it is going to take a lot of time. So that more, the data set becoming more and more bigger, it is going to be difficult. And outliers can impact performance. What I mean is, so you assume that you have a point, a data point which is 
say something like uh, in this case 100 comma 1000 and another data point 500 comma 10,000 that is going to change the whole way this clustering happens so it we need to ensure there is no outlayers which are remarkably offsetting the entire process here it makes an internal assumption every element belongs to one and only one cluster but in ideal case it is not this scenario so for example in amazon a refrigerator or a mixi can be a home appliance as well as an electrical appliance so it can be in two different clusters as well so that is the reason we use an algorithm called fuzzy c which is a variant of knn wherein it will not only save the distance from the cluster, uh, centroid of one cluster but it will also save the distance from the centroid of the neighboring clusters so that wherever there is an overlap required or is present those elements can be pulled as well so uh, practically knn has difficulties one is its slowness and the other is it makes an assumption that one element belongs to only one cluster and outlayers it doesn't handle extremely well so that's all about knn uh, in the next session we are going to see the python implementation of it which is very straightforward hope you liked it uh, if you have any questions please um, either email to me at querishabi at gmail.com or you can put it in comments.